Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cupcakes, one of the most infamous stories in the grimdark creepypasta universe. Dating back, gosh, dude, that's came out in like almost like before 2012. This sucker's old. Oh my goodness, time flies by. A pioneer in the art. Now, this is going to be very gore, gory, probably graphic. You know, I actually never read the story before, but I have watched the story. I have listened to the story before. But, uh, yeah, we're just going to get started here in a couple of minutes. Well, don't, don't say your age on the internet. Well, what's up, folks? Now, I don't know what some good ambiance would be. I know some ambiance that might work for the second half of this story when things get interesting, but I'm not too sure about right now, because I don't know how to start this off exactly. Now, as the title says, we are also going to be reading Rocket to Insanity, the unofficial sequel, I believe. I believe it's unofficial sequel to uh, this story. So we're also going to be doing that. Oh, glad to hear it. Kind compliments. Um, uh, I'm not sure if we are going to watch Sinclair de Gore's video on this. We can. We definitely can. Here's a question for all of you. Do you all want me to watch Lost Narrator's videos, both of them after we finish each story? Okay, let me let me do it. Let me take it a step back. After each story, so Cupcakes and Rocket to Insanity, do you want me to play the respective video after the story in question? Or do you want me to just play both of them at the very end, after the reading's done in general? Just curious. Saying yes does not help. <laughs> okay, let's not spam chat after. I guess it would flow better, but okay. After the reading is done in general? Hmm. Okay, you know what? We'll start another poll. Are right, done. After each story, respectively, start poll. Uh, I, I mean, I'm pretty indecisive and I don't really know what to choose, so I'm just going to have you all choose for me. Dang. After each story, respectively, is winning. Okay. All right, cool beans. We'll do it. We'll do, uh, do it after each, respectively. Um. Yeah, we'll just wait for the minute to be done.
<laughs> I know. I, I like that about the YouTube uh, poll system is that you have to be very like you can only choose one. You can't choose more. And I like that. So we are just going to begin. Okay. I, if you're just going to be like this, I'm just going to time you out like right now. It's just so spammy. Just a chill pill. Okay, so chapter one, Cupcakes. Is it a prank? Created by Sergeant Spar uh, Sprinkles. Now I'm actually reading this on a different site. This is, it's ad, this story actually isn't on film fiction. And this is the only website I could get it like to display in at least a moderately partial dark mode otherwise it's blinding bright so the air was warm the sun was shining and every pony in ponyville was having a glorious day the town square was bustling and crowded and busy ponies filled the streets all the pony folks seemed to have somewhere specific to be all except rainbow dash her place was in the sky. She tore freely through the air, speeding one way and the next, buzzing the treetops and the racing the wind. The blue pegasus swooped over a schoolyard, much to, de to the delight of the children, then climbed several hundred feet and dove, streaking downward as fast as she could, seconds before hitting the ground. Her wings flew open and she pulled up back into the clear blue. Rainbow felt alive. Suddenly, Dash remembered that she had somewhere to be. She was supposed to meet with Pinkie Pie in five minutes. Dash had gone so caught up in her exercises that she'd nearly forgotten that Pinkie had asked to meet her at Sugar Cube Corner at three. Pinkie hadn't said why or what they'd be doing, but Dash knew that with Pinkie, it could be anything. Dash wasn't sure if she really wanted to go, though. She was so engaged with her stunts that she thought about blowing Pinky off to continue flying. But Dash's consciousness, or conscious, got the better of her. She knew that it would hurt Pinky's feelings, after all. Pinky had said it was going to be something special, just for the two of them. Um? Dash considered it and thought, why not? What did she have to lose? Heck, it might have, it might be more pranking. Pinky might have found a bunch more fun stuff to pull on folks, and they'd had so much fun the last time. Dash kicked into overdrive drive to make up for the lost time and sped to her appointment. When Dash walked into the store, she was immediately greeted by her host, who was bouncing in excitement. Yay, you're here! I've been waiting all day, said the jumping pony. Sorry if I'm a little late, Pinky. I was doing my afternoon exercises and lost track of time. Dash apologized. Pinky giggled and responded in a gleeful, reassuring tone. Oh, that's okay. You're here now. What's a few more minutes? I've been so excited thinking about all the fun we're going to do. I haven't stopped bouncing since I woke up. I mean, I almost forgot to breathe. I'm so happy. <laughs> Dash gave a slightly uncomfortable laugh. She had always appreciated Pinkie Pie's friendly, outgoing way of life, but Pinkie's overabundant enthusiasm almost creeped her out. Dash maintained a polite expression, however. Ah, uh, maintained a polite expression, however. If Pinkie was this worked up, whatever she had planned must be good. So, are you ready to get started, Rainbow Dash? I've got everything all ready. The pink pony said. Dash psyched herself up. You bet you, Pinky. So what you got planned? We gonna prank somebody? I got a couple of good ones I've been thinking about. Or maybe you've got some stunts you think I should try. Or perhaps... Making cupcakes! Pinkly, uh, pinkly. Yup, that makes sense. Pinky happily announced. Baking? Dash was disappointed. Pinky, you know I'm not good at baking. Remember the last time? Oh, that's not a problem at all. I only need your help making them. I'll be doing most of the work, Pinky explained. Dash thought for about... Dash thought for about it for a second. Well, 
All right, I guess that's okay. What exactly do you need me to do? That's the spirit. Here you go. Pinky handed Dash a cupcake. Dash was puzzled. Puzzled. I thought I was helping you bake. You will be. I made this one just for you before you got here. So is this like taste testing or something? Sorta, Pinky said. Dash shrugged and popped the pastry in her mouth. She chewed a bit and swallowed. Not bad. Okay, now what? Dash asked. Now? Pinky informed her. You take a nap. Puzzled, Dash opened her mouth but fell instantly lightheaded. A wave of dizziness washed over her. The world spun and seconds later, she collapsed to the floor. Dun dun dun! <laughs> So I, I do have some ambiance here. I'm not sure if it's going to be absolutely great for this next sequence. So we're ju you're just going to have to bear with me here. Well, well you guys are just going to have to tell me if you like it or hate it in this next part. It's going to be very quiet, very subtle in your ears. You'll hear it in a sec. There we go. I don't know why there's rats in there, but I think it's the best we got. <clears throat> Chapter 2. Please don't do it, Pinky. When Dash regained consciousness, she found herself in a dark room. She tried to shake her head, but found that a taut leather strap held it firmly in place. She struggled to move, but braces around her chest and limbs glued her to a rack, formed from a series of sturdy planks which spread her legs wide apart. Dash's wings were the only part of her not tied down, and they fluttered frantically while she struggled to escape. As she writhed, Pinky jumped suddenly into her line of sight. <clears throat> Goody, you're awake. Now we can get started, Pinky stated gleefully. She bound bounded into the darkness and quickly reappeared, pushing a small cart covered with a cloth. Pinky, what's going on? I can't move, Dash said urgently. Well, duh, that's because you're tied down, chided Pinky. That's why you can't move. I didn't think you'd need to be told that. But why? What's happening? I thought you said I was going to help you make cupcakes. You are helping. You see, I ran out of the special ingredient, and I need you to get more. Special ingredient? Dash was now breathing heavily and started to panic. What special ingredient? Pinky Gildal giggled and responded. You silly. Dash's eyes widened, and her face contorted in fear. Then she started to laugh and said in a voice bordering on hysteria, Whoa, you really got me there, Pinkie Pie. I mean, tricking me into thinking I'm going to get made into a cupcake? I gotta tell you, this is the best prank yet. You win. You're the best. Pinky only giggled even more. Aw, thanks, Dash, but I haven't done any pranks today, so I can't accept your praise. Dash was struggling again. Pinky, come on. This isn't funny. Th then, why, then why were you laughing? Before Dash could answer, Pinky grabbed the cloth and wiped it off the cart. On the cart was a tray containing various sh sharp medical tools and knives, carefully organized and wickedly sharp, as well as a large medical bag. Dash was now in full panic mode. She was starting to hyperventilate. Her mind raced as she tried to reason with the pink pony. You can't do this, Pinky. I'm your friend. I know you are, and that's why I'm so happy that I've got you here. We get to share your last moments together. Just you and me. Pinky was skipping again. But other ponies will wonder where I am. When the clouds pile up, they'll come looking for me, and then you'll get found out. Dash cried in desperation. Oh, Dash, said Pinky. Don't worry. 
There are plenty of Pegasus ponies to take care of a few clouds. And besides, no one will find out. I mean, how long do you think I've been doing this? And with that ominous statement, the light suddenly came to life and revealed the rest of the room. Oh no. Dash reeled in horror at the image presented to her. The room was decorated with a typical but twisted Pinkie Pie flare. Colorful streamers of dried entrails fluttered around on the ceilings. Brightly painted skulls of all sizes were attached to the walls, and organs done up in pastels filled with helium were tied to the backs of chairs. The tables and chairs were made of bones and the preserved flesh of past ponies. Dash cringed upon seeing the centerpiece of the table nearest to her. The heads of four foals, their eyes closed as if they were sleeping, were wearing party hats made from their own skin. With a thrill of terror, Dash recognized one of them as Apple Bloom's classmate, Twist. Dash's eyes darted back and forth and then fell upon a patchwork banner hanging from the rafters, made from several tanned pony hides. The words, Life is a Party, was scrawled on it in blood red. Dash's attention was brought back by a party horn. Unfurling and tickling her nose, she gaped at Pinkie Pie, who was standing right in front of her. The party pony was wearing a dress quilted from dried skin. Emblazoned with cutie marks on her... Cutie marks. On her back fluttered six Pegasus wings, all of different colors. As the earth pony skipped in excitement, her necklace of severed unicorn horns clanked together loudly. Like it? Pinky asked. I made it myself. Desperately, Dash pleaded with the smiling pony before her. Pinky, please! I'm sorry if I did anything to you. I didn't mean it. Please let me go. I promise. I won't tell anybody. Oh, Dash, you didn't do anything. It's just that your number came up and, well, I don't make the rules. We can't turn back now. Dash was tearing up. How could this be happening? Ah, oh, don't be sad, Dash, said Pinky. Look, this will cheer you up. I brought you a friend. Seemingly out of nowhere. Pinky produced a brightly painted blue and yellow skull. It was about pony size, but it had a very defining feature. A beak. Dash gaped in shock. Is... is that... is that... Hey Dash, let's hang together. These ponies are lamos. Dweebs, dweebs, dweebs. Pinky mimicked. I caught her right before she left the show. Remember when I left the party for about 20 minutes? That wasn't enough time to play with her, of course. I had to wait till after the party to do that. But boy, am I glad I did. It was worth it for the flavor alone. Griffins taste like two animals at once. It's amazing. I know she didn't have a number like everyone else in Ponyville, but when I was going to get another chance to try a griffin... I probably should have asked where she came from so I could have gotten more, but I forgot. I'll tell you what, though. She was quite the fighter. She lasted a long time, which was a lot of fun for me. I got the chance to play with somebody other than a pony and try new things. It's too bad she had such a meany mouth. She said so much bad stuff and I just had to take her tongue out. You know, bad language makes for bad feelings, Rainbow Dash. Dash didn't have anything to say. She just sobbed and writhed in her tight bonds. Well, said Pinky with an air of finality, that's enough reminiscing. It's time to begin. Putting down Gilda's skull, the pink pony gripped a scalpel in the cleft of her hoof and walked over to Dash's right flank. Without any flare, Pinky placed the blade an inch above Dash's cutie mark and began a circular circle. Circular... <sighs> Circular cut around it. Dash shouted in pain and tried desperately to pull away, but the braces held her still, finishing the incision. Pinky grabbed a curved skinning knife from the tray, screwing up her face in concentration. She worked it under Dash's skin and sliced the hide away from the muscle. Dash ground her teeth as she tearfully watched her flesh peel away. Pinky then moved to the other side and repeated the process on Dash's left flank. 
Once she had finished, Pinky held up both cutie marks in front of her friend and started waving them like pom-poms. Dash just whimpered. Her thighs burned like nothing she had felt before. Placing the ragged patches of skin down, Pinky selected a large butcher knife and walked behind the blue pegasus. Hope you don't mind. I think I'm gonna wing it now. Pinky laughed. She grabbed Dash's left wing in her mouth and played with it for a few seconds, yanking it back so the sharp pain reignited the fire in Dash's flanks. Then, stretching the wing out, Pinky brought down the blade. Brought the blade down hard at the base. Instantly, Dash screamed and thrashed her appendage. The movement threw off Pinky's aim. She tried to hit the mark again, but missed, and carved a huge slice into Dash's back. Dash, you gotta stay still or I'll keep missing, scolded Pinky as her friend howled. Pinky took another whack and hit her target. She swung again and again. Blood sprayed into the air, but Pinky realized she wasn't getting anywhere. The blade just wasn't going through the bone. Hmm, I guess I forgot to sharpen it. I'll try something else, stated Pinky matter-of-factly as she tossed the knife over her shoulder, embedding the blade in the table. Through the haze of pain and tears, Dash heard the sound of a metal box opening and closing. Got it. Say, Dash, why do they call it a hacksaw? It doesn't hack. Hacking is what I was doing with the knife. This is a saw. I don't get it. That was bad. I don't get it. Pinky placed the tool over the magical flesh of the last attempt, standing on her hind legs. She worked the saw back and forth with her front hooves. It sliced effortlessly through the bone and skin. The feeling of the jagged teeth grinding into her made Dash want to vomit. She watched numbly as her wing flew over her head and landed with a fluff on the table. Pinky moved to the next wing and started so sawing. Dash didn't struggle this time. She had given up trying to fight and focused on choking back screams of agony. Abruptly, the sawing paused. Pinky was only halfway done, the wing hanging off by a sliver. Hey, Dash, Pinky piped up. Think fast. Suddenly, Pinky yanked the wing as hard as she could. The bone snapped, but the po blue pony skin held, then tore away. The pole ripped away a long strip of flesh all the way down Dash's back to her rump. Her body seized at the unexpected trauma. As her pelvis tensed up, Dash felt a warm release between her legs and her loud unending melody of pain filled the room unable to catch her breath she blacked out dash awoke with a gasp the stench of her urine filled her mucus cake nostril this is i didn't know it was going to be this bad i didn't know we we're going to get into some very gross crud here okay that was unexpected. I know, that caught me off guard. Freaking urine, that's disgusting. I didn't know I was reading this. I didn't know I was reading that. <laughs> I know, I know the YouTube loading icon. I didn't know that was going to happen. Okay. As her vision swam into focus, she saw a very pouty Pinkie Pie removing a large adrenaline needle from her chest, stomping her hooves. Yeah, I know, so unnecessary. It's so extra. The frustrated Pinky lashed out at her helpless victim. No, it's a thing. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a real thing. I get it, but like, unnecessary. <sighs> oh, okay. I gotta keep going. I gotta keep going. Let's just hope that's like the end of that. Didn't anybody teach you manners? It's very rude to fall asleep when somebody invites you over to spend time with them. How would you like it if I came to your house and went to sleep? Oh, I'm sorry, Dash. You're so boring. I think I'll take a nap. You think I like always doing this by myself? I told you how excited I got when I found you were next. I was excited to have a friend be here with me a while I worked. But no, you've got to be inconsiderate. You know, I thought you were tough. I thought you could handle anything. I've had foals stand up better than you. Do I have to baby you? Huh? Is that how you want me to remember? 
you as a baby? Dude, pinky with the like sass. As Pinky stopped to catch her breath, Dash blinked and sobbed softly. Her back was in agony, her sides were on fire, and there was an intense pain in one of her legs. As she blinked again, she saw Pinky pop something red into her stomach and began to chew. Noticing Dash's stare, Pinky quickly gulped the morsel down. What? Pinky asked. Oh, this? She held up another piece. Well, while you were asleep, I got a little impatient and helped myself to a small sample. I got it from your leg. You're not bad. Want to try some? Without waiting for a response, Pinky shoved the strip of meat into the revolted Pegasus's mouth. Dash gagged and immediately spit it out. Pinky frowned and picked up the chunk of flesh. If you didn't want it, you could have said no. She contemplated the discarded snotty morsel, then gulped it up. It's not like you haven't had my cupcakes before. Swallowing, swallowing, Pinky turned her attention to a small can on the tray. She removed the lid, revealing that it was filled with red-hot coals. Lying on top of the coals were several large nails. As the adrenaline filled her veins, Dash began to panic again, picking up the can. Pinky walked over to Dash's left, holding some tongs with her mouth. Pinky carefully picked up a nail and positioned it at the seam between her victim's front leg and hoof. She then grabbed a hammer and took careful aim. No! Pinky! That was bad. Oh well. Dash screamed. No, no. No, no. Oh no, we're almost at the end of the page. The hammer came down and the nail punctured Dash's skin. The white hot burning was too much. Dash screamed as she pulled and thrashed at the braces, causing her raw skin to rub and tear. Pinky tried to line up another nail, but couldn't find her aim, and let out, let out a frustrated grunt. When Pinky brought the hammer back to take a wild swing, Dash burst out crying and begging, Please stop! Please stop! Please! S yeah, I overdid that. But oh well. Next one. Dang. Rainbow's becoming a victim. Rainbow's becoming something. A cupcake. Chapter 3. Every rainbow has an end. Pinky rolled her eyes, putting down the hammer and tongs. She walked back in front of her friend and started pensively, stared pen pensively at the broken Pegasus. Gilda didn't even cry this much when she had a live Paris Bright stuffed down her throat. Pinky thought for a minute about what to do next, then had a sudden spark of inspiration. Rotating a wheel on the rack, Pinky laid Dash on her back, then moved to Dash's hind legs, bringing the can with her. Picking up her tools, Pinky drove a searing hot spike of metal directly into the bottom of Dash's hoof as Dash yelled in pain. Pinky moved around and drove a second nail into the other hoof. Next, Pinky went back to her cart and located an enormous battery and controller, which she dragged over to where she was working. She tied copper wires between the terminals and the nails driven into Dash's hooves, then gave Dash a wink and flipped the switch. Also, uh, supposedly this story was titled as uh, Grimdark AF. <laughs> Compared to like every other Grimdark story that is just titled Grimdark, this one was apparently titled Grimdark AF. Which I think is interesting. Electricity rocketed through Dash's body. The blue pony reacted immediately. Her body seized and her muscles snapped tout. Dash's hips thrust skyward. Her eyes rolled back and she let out a deep throat shredding cry. Pinky giggled and danced in place. Then reached down and turned up the juice. Dash convulsed uncontrollably. And her bladder emptied once more. God dang it, Rainbow Dash. Quit doing your crud. Right there, right in the torture room. <laughs> After about five minutes, Pinky shut off the power. Wisps of steam rose from the singed fur around Dash's hooves, and the area reeked of cooked flesh and burnt enamel. 
Pinky rotated Dash upright again and tried to snap the drooling, delirious pony back to attention. Dash? Dash! Rainbow Dash, wake up! Dash moaned and managed to give him give a modicum of weak acknowledge, acknowledgement. Ugh. Pinky started her handiwork, then reached into the medicine bag and produced a large syringe. All right, time for the last round. Dash focused blarily on the needle, which Pinky took as a question as to what it was. This is a little something to take the pain away. Pinky informed Dash as she walked around to her victim's ruined back. Dash flinched as Pinky jabbed the needle into the lower part of the blue pony's spine. Moving in front of her friend again, Pinky leaned down and elaborated. In a few minutes, you won't be able to feel anything below your ribcage. Then you'll be able to stay awake to watch the harvest. Well, that's freaking ominous. Dash started cracking. Pinky? She choked out. Yeah? I want to go home. Dash sobbed. Yeah, I can see I can see you wanting to do that, replied the party pony. Sometimes I just want to give up. Just say I'm done with this mess and go to bed. But you know what? You can't shrug off your responsibilities. You got to pull yourself up and meet the challenges head on. That's the only way you're going to get ahead in life. Wow. Wow, I wow. Pinky, the frickin' serial killer, has, like, a strong argument response to that. Wow. That's rough. Dash hung her head and cried. Minutes passed as the drug took effect. Eventually, Dash was completely numb from her chest to her flanks. At this point, Pinky approached with a scalpel. Glancing at Dash and smiling, Pinky made a long horizontal cut across the Pegasus Pony's pelvis, just above her crotch, very specifically. Moving up Dash's body, Pinky made a similar incision under her ribs. Finally, Pinky made a long vertical cut down Dash's stomach, connecting the two. Looks like I got my eye on you, Dash, Pinky giggled. With the moist, gooey sound, the flaps of skin opened. The sight of her own organs and the lack of feeling caused Dash's breathing to intensify. Pinky carefully sliced open Dash's abdominal sac and grabbed her large intestines as she separated the organ from the rest of the digestive tract and pulled it out of the new cavity. Pinky grew jovial, laughing as she gutted her friend. Pinky began to make jokes. Dash, growing weaker from this new source of blood loss, tried desperately to shut out the macabre's comedy act. This is so screwed up. Look at me, I'm Rarity! Pinky laughed, slinging the intestinal tube around her neck and spraying blood in all directions. It's in my new scarf so pretty! Oh, that's... grim. Reaching back inside, she sliced the smaller intestine off from the bowels, squeezing out the excess excrement. <laughs> Gross. Pinky filled the slimy organ through her teeth and dragged it back and forth. Ugh. Dead to say you gotta floss every day, Dash. Dash was barely aware what was going on anymore. The shock was causing her to fade. Disappointed, Pinky dived back into the blue pony's guts, ramping up her routine. Aw. Oh, hold on a sec. <laughs> I gotta make sure. Yeah, there we go. Gotta make sure that just doesn't end randomly. Ah, oh, don't go yet, Dash. Pinky started pulling out the rest of Dash's organs, pausing with each removal. I know I can be a real pancreas, but you know I'm just kidney with you. You really gotta learn to liver it up. Boy, these jokes are getting bladder, <laughs> bladder. Guess you gotta develop a stomach for them. Pinky placed the discarded body parts into a bucket, keeping the last one for a bit longer. Ooh, bagpipes, she said, placing the end of Dash's esophagus in her mouth and the stomach in her armpit. 
She squeezed in a spurt of acid her, hit her tongue. Ew! Oh, hey, look! There's your cupcake, Dash! What the hell? What? Dash didn't hear her tormentor. She had slipped from consciousness minutes ago. Pinky, not yet satisfied, hit Dash with another adrenaline shot. Not even adrenaline's gonna bring you back from being this mutilated, dude. No way. No absolute way. Dash woke up for the last time, her heart pounding. Warm blood flowed out from the wound in her chest in great spurts. It wouldn't be long now. Pinky brought Dash around onto her back again and straddled the blue pony's chest scalpel at the ready. You know, Rainbow Dash, I'm disappointed. I thought you would have lasted longer. I really wanted to spend more time with you before we got here. But I guess it's my fault. I should have taken it a little slower. Oh well, it was really ni was nice knowing you, Dash. The blade sunk into the blue throat and worked its way up to Dash's chin. Coming back down, Pinky's scalpel then circled Dash's neck. The last thing Rainbow Dash felt was her skin being cut away from her skull and the metal of the blade scraping her teeth. Then she was gone. Pinkie Pie stared into the mirror. She had done a really good job, even keeping the eyelids. She winked, and Dash winked back. Pinkie smiled, but still she was sad that her friend was gone. Dash had only lasted 50 minutes, not nearly as long as Pinkie had wanted. She looked back at the cadaver hanging in the center of the room. The last of her friend's fluids draining into a pan. Yuck. Disgusting. Foul. Yep. No more Rainbow Dash. As she looked, Pinky cocked her head. She began to take notice of the fact that there really wasn't much damage to the corpse. In fact, the Pink Pony mused, I think an idea exploded in, in her head. She was good at sewing, and she had all the pieces. All she had to do was put them back together. Yeah, just she just had to get some stuffing and bingo. She'd have Rainbow Dash forever. In fact, thought Pinky, that's what she'd do for all her best friends when their numbers came up. She was so excited, she skipped right over to the body with her Skinner to get started. The cupcakes could wait. Pinkie Pie had a friend to make. Well. Well, that was interesting. What the heck? <laughs> you know, I, I I gotta admit, I don't remember it being that specific. That was... Wow. I'm impressed, I gotta admit. There are things I expect. That was not one of them. Honestly, story wasn't that bad. The only thing I do not like, really, was obvious of the bodily functions. There's no way Dash would have lasted that long. Anybody would die. So you cut them open like that? Oh my god. What, what she used... Her esophagus as a thing of bagpipes? Are I what? What? Honestly, you know what? That th that's how you traumatize a generation. That's the way to do it. We are going to now just go find the video. Get that pulled up. This long text. So, Rocket to Insanity, a story inspired by Sergeant Sprinkles Cupcakes fanfic. There is an evil within the hearts of all ponies, such as the balance of nature. Good can only be prevalent for so long, before evil musters its forces and seizes upon the heart, twisting friendships into war, loyalty into deceit, and kindness 
and to unadulterated hate. You know what's up? Welcome to Technical Difficulty Simulator. Screaming. Screams echoed through the cloud palace of Rainbow Dash's home. The filly startled wide awake in a cold sweat, terror surging through her veins. Nightmares. Again. The seventh time this month, and it was always the same one. The one with the cupcakes. Flashes of memory lanced through her head, wings being hacked off, then ripped from her their sockets. Needles plunged into her beating heart, adrenaline injected to her body to keep her awake and alert at the torture when aunt as the torture went on. The smell of her own flesh cooking, the sight of her own blood and gore spilling from her surgically incised belly it was that decisioned belly. The mastermind behind her terror toying with those glistening organs like they were party favors. She knew in her heart that Pinkie Pie would never be capable of doing such a gruesome act. But that thought didn't help to make the dreams any less vivid. The Pegasus pony sobbed openly, curling up in her blanket and rocking back and forth as her body trembled with fear. She hadn't told anyone about the dreams, about the lingering feeling of steel piercing flesh and blade cutting bone. Her work had suffered because of the constant night terrors, the nightmares being so powerful that she was simply afraid of going back to sleep. Some nights nice staying up altogether in an attempt to stave off the horrors for just one more night. And every pony wondered why she spent most of her day napping in the open, in the daylight. Because in the shining brilliance of the sun, it was the only way she could actually rest. But even then, the black clutches of her fear-addled subconscious had begun to creep even into that relative safety, following her through the dreaming world. Dash whimpered as tears streaked down her face, staining the fur of her cheeks as wide eyes darted around the darkened scenery of her room, heart pounding in her chest as breath came before hiccups, hiccuping sobs. Her wings clinging tight against her form as paranoia began to clutch at the edges of her mind. Shadows lurched and moved in her peripheral vision. Routine, natural noises became becoming distorted and echoing within her mind. As adrenaline surged through her shivering form, this was unhealthy. Her mind was slowly breaking under the horrors of her subconscious mind. Things that no pony should ever even have the slightest thought about chipping away at her psyche. This is a different story. This isn't the one we just read. She was starting to crack. Rainbow Dash? Rainbow Dash, hey! Has any pony seen Rainbow Dash around? Applejack trotted through the streets of Ponyville, looking high and low for the town's resident speedster pony. Bystanders just shook their head and shrugged. Horse feathers. Figures that pony nowhere? I don't know. To be seen. When you really need her, the cow pony sighed and continuing on through town, hoofbeats kicking up dust as she looked to the sky for Pegasus Pony. Consonant Rainbow Dash, where in the wild world of Equestria are you? <laughs> she doesn't know. A long yawn from the branches of a tree behind her met her answer the pony in question, dipping her head down and gazing at Applejack from an upside down position. Huh? What? Applejack? What is it that is so important that you've got to interrupt my napping? The western pony stamped a hoof. This font is really screwing with me. <laughs> it's too long. <laughs> oh gosh. Interrupted my... The western pony stamped a hoof on the ground, scowling at the pegasus. Now you know just why I'm making a fuss and finding you. You said you were going to bring over a little rainstorm for the crops at Sweet Apple Acres nearly two hours ago. Instead, I find you out here in a tree snoozing your little behind off. Dash gave a groan, slipping out of the tree and landing on her hooves, shaking her head. She looked more disheveled than usual. Her mane and her mane a mess, dark bags under her eyes from many sleepless nights. She looked pale, sickly almost, yet still tried to put on an air of cheerfulness. She heaved a yawn before giving dismissive wave to Applejack. Yeah, yeah, keep your saddle on, yawn. 
I'll get to it right now. Sorry and stuff. As the Pegasus pony turned and spread her wings to take off, Applejack tilted her head to the side and gave a little frown. Uh, Dash, you feeling okay? You look a little, uh, under the weather. Dash grumped, shrugging her shoulders as she gave her wings a little test lap. Mm, fine, was the only response from the Pegasus. The cow pony behind her stepped forward, giving Dash aside, Dash aside a little nudge with her snout. You sure about that? She was cut off by the Pegasus suddenly jerking away from Applejack, darting up into the air as her eyes went wide. Don't. Don't touch me. I'm fine. Honest, just... She nearly spilled the beans right then and there, but refrained. She couldn't take the chance that the other pony might think differently of her because she was being scared of her mind every night by some stupid nightmare. Her body gave a little shiver. As Applejack looked on with concern, I, uh, I mean, uh, gotta go, before Applejack could say anything further. Dash was off like a rocket towards Sweet Apple Acres, leaving the cow pony to just scratch her head in confusion. That girl ain't right. <laughs> I love Applejack. Applejack's just honest like that. Another terror-filled night, Dash lay curled upon the floor of her cloud house, blankets swathed around her shivering form. It was worse this time. She had been flayed open, set upon the dining table of the pink earth pony, as slabs of her own meat dripping with her life fluids was sheared from her flanks, served to all of her friends. Herself, still somehow alive enough to be aware of the entire situation, hearing the laughter as they devoured her living form. As fork and knife dug into her innards, tearing her apart, she was nothing more than a slab of meat for her friend's enjoyment. Hiccups punctured through heavy sobs as the Pegasus pony clutched at her head. The visions that her nightmares had been visiting upon her ingrained within her memory. Every horrible detail, from the fiery pain of rendered flesh to the sickening sound of innards being torn and ripped out of her belly, was cast in vivid depiction. She whined as she lay curled tightly upon the floor, sniffling at as tears sniffing, as tears gushed from her eyes. Just leave me alone. Why won't you leave me alone? She hiccuped, rocking back and forth. I don't deserve this. Just stay out. Stay out of my head. Get out of my head, please. Just get out of my head. Fear turned to anger. <clears throat> Dash, fear turned to anger. <laughs> Dash beating her hooves against her temples. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. She weeped openly, grinding her forehead against the floor of her room, hooves pounding and pounding at her head, bruising the flesh, flesh as pent-up frustration and sleep deprivation erupted in an agonized scream of rage and sorrow. Another night. Another crack at, in the window. Every pony had noticed it. It was in the way she walked, the way she talked. Her body language just screamed it. Gone was Rainbow Dash, that cheerful brash speedster replaced by some hollow shell. She drifted aim aimlessly about over Ponyville, as weeks of interrupted sleep had taken its toll upon her. All of her friends knew that something was up. But none of them knew exactly what to do. She had pushed them away when they had tried to come confront her, lashing out like a wounded animal any time they tried to console her or plead her to get help. Too headstrong, some would say, too proud, others still. But none of them realized the gravity of the situation until that one fateful day. The day that Rainbow Dash finally snapped. It had been unreasonably warm spring day in Ponyville. Every pony was out enjoying the temperate weather, from foals to colts and then some. As every pony went about their business, Lyra and Bonbon bon chatting it up beneath their usual table at the cafe, Applejack selling the first harvest from Sweet Apple Acres, as ponies lined up for those ruby delectables. And within the candy corner, Pinkie Pie was busy darting to and fro in the kitchen, baking up a storm, she glanced at the clock every now and then, frowning each time before the bell to the kitchen. I'm sorry, no. The bell 
to the door, finally rang open, a haggard-looking Rainbow Dash entering the shop. Rainbow, you're finally here. Oh, I've been worried about you. You've been all mopsy-dopsy, so I thought I'd ask you to come visit me so I can make you feel extra super special and cheer you up. But then you didn't show up when I thought you were going to, and I was all sad that you were going to stay cooped up in your house all day, but then you came in, and now you're here, and now we can have some more fun. Holy cow. Any Pinkie Pie lines are a mouthful. My goodness. <laughs> Dash merely looked at her uh, blankly before shaking her head and stumbled forward. Whatever, Pinky. What did you want me here for? The energetic earth pony bounced about the kitchen, over towards one of the many ovens of the candy corner before pulling the door down, reaching in and pulling out a tray of puffy, fluffy cupcakes with a generous slathering of icing upon them. She spun around, grinning widely, as she showed the baked goods off to Dash. I made you cupcakes. Dash paled. Mind flashed back to the earliest of those nightmares, the most vivid, the most intense. A tray of cupcakes, tasting it, finding motor skills rapidly deteriorating, stumbling as her body shut down under the effects of some unknown drug. Pinkie Pie looming over her with that trademark grin, eyes gleaming as the world dimmed around her, and here it was. Happening for real, vision became hazard as the world began to spin around her, the Pegasus stumbling back and shaking her head, whispering under her breath. No, 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 she backed up, eyes wide with fear as she shook her head violently, looking around frantically for a way out, any way out, the window, the door, no, 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 I don't want him, I'm not gonna let... Let you. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Pinky merely tilted her head to the side quizzically, setting the tray down and lifting a few of the cakes out and plating them, bouncing over to the sh shivering Rainbow Dash and offering the plate to the Pegasus. Dash stared at them. They were the same color, the same kind. Run, a voice in her head said. Run. Run, you idiot. Run. Pinkie Pie frowned at the discarded cupcakes, but in typical Pinkie fashion, she just shrugged and went about cleaning them out, humming to herself. Maybe you don't like avocado icing. That's okay. I made plenty more, so we can make some to your liking. Is that okay, Rainbow Dash? She glanced back, the Pegasus pony litting out panicked, whimpering noises, eyes fixated on the pony before her, pupils nearly pinpricks, as fear and adrenaline coursed through her veins. She was pinned between Pinky and the wall behind her, chest heaving with heavy gasps. Her sleep-deprived horror-filled mind played the scene from her nightmares over and over again, of the raw rending through flesh, cutting through bone. Run. Get away, scalpel piercing her breast, dragging through her flesh down to her groin, flaying her open like some sort of piñata. Move. Just get away, get away, get away. She was hyperventilating by now, no longer seeing a long-time friend, but a horrific, sadistic butcher. Do something. And then she saw it. That shining, sharp protector, just sitting there on the table next to her. The voice within her mind whispered to her like a seductive lover, sounding so wrong, but so right at the same time. Kill her. Dash hesitated. Part of her wanted to scream. Another to run, but yet another. Consider the request. Kill her before she kills you. Her mind was a maelstrom of conflicting thoughts. The Pegasus feeling sick to her stomach, weak in the knees. The beat of her own heart pounding within her head. Take the knife. She stared at it, hoofs slowly stretching out, trembling as part of her still ward, still tried to reason. Take it. Take the knife.
What the heck is wrong with my chat? Y'all are just... What's wrong with you? No. No. She's my friend. I... I can't. I... I kill her, and the hurting will stop. P please Pinky, run. Just run. Oh, God, please don't make me do this. Kill her. 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 What happened next was a blur. The memories fuzzy in Dash's mind as Pinkie Pie tried to make sense of the sudden attack upon her person. Dash let out a chilling mix between a wall and a wail and a scream. Catching the earth pony off guard as the blade darted forward, slashing through her neck, severing vein and artery as a gout of crimson issued forth from the wound. Shock and surprise registered on Pinkie Pie's face as she gurgled blood hemorrhaging from that wound, staining her pink fur with the red hue of her life essence. Again and again, that silver blade struck out, Dash's speed not restricted to her flight as she plunged that blade into the filly before at, before at rapid pace, sobbing hysterically as she carved the squirmy and flailing filly up through breast, through bone. Pinkie Pie's struggle slowly faded as her blood was sp spilt onto the floor of Candy Corner's kitchen, pooling around her, splattering the pegasus atop her with that hot red fluid. You just leave me alone, she screamed out, fear turning to rage. You couldn't just go away, could you? You had to keep coming back. That is so screwed up, Rainbow Dash, is what Rainbow Dash is going through right now. You just had to keep coming back. Dude, that's, that's so screwed up. She's, like, taking out, like, the dreams on actual Pinky. Pinky's struggles grew weaker and weaker. Her eyes wide with terror as tears streamed down her face, visage frozen in a mix of fear and anguish. What did she do? Was it the icing? Did she use salt instead of sugar? Why? As those slowly glazing eyes stared up at Dash, the strikes of the blade grew slower and slower. The Pegasus finally plunging the implement deep into Pinky's chest, spearing through the filly's heart, ending her party once and for all. Dash heaved for breath, limbs shaking as she looked down upon her handiwork. Blood stained her fur and feathers, painting her a deep crimson, wearing the life force of her former friend like some macabre outfit. She sobbed, letting out a wail of anguish as she realized the gravity of what she had just done. Arms wrapped around the butchered filly, Dash holding the still warm corpse of her friend tight. No, 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 I didn't. Oh, Celestia, no. What have I done? What did I do? Dash's body shook as her chest heaved with each gut-wrenching cry of anguish, suddenly letting go of Pinky's body and laying out an ear-piercing shriek of terror as she looked at her own hooves. Blood and viscera coated them, dripping down through her fur, the scene straight from a horror movie laid before her eyes. She skittered backwards, slipping into a pool of blood of her own creation slamming cheek first into the pile of gore before finally gaining purchase and dragging herself over against the farthest wall from Pinky's still form, her stomach mutinying on her as she emptied its contents upon the floor next to her. Her mind raced, thoughts running a mile a minute as she hiccuped wide terror filled with terror filled eyes staring at the scene made by her own hoof, murder. She had committed murder on one of her own friends. It was unheard of. No pony had murdered another in hundreds of years. That's hard to believe. Voices within her mind clawed and whispered to her. The world spinning around her as time seemed to stand still for her, the last vestiges of her sanity being plucked apart one by one, until that final thread finally snapped. Hooves grasped at her head, matting her rainbow-colored mane down the blood and ichor 
the Pegasus rocking back and forth in the bloodied kitchen as a crazed grin spread across her muzzle, humming disjointedly to herself. A giggle at the ghastly hee-hee snortle at the spooky ha-ha hee-hee. Spooky! Spooky hee-hoo! Ha-ha! Spooky! Scary! Scary! Scary wary! Ooh! <laughs> Boo! Super scary spooky! <laughs> That's 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 what uh, this bottom part reminds me of. <laughs> a giggle at the ghastly hee hee snortle at the spooky ha ha hee 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 hoo hee hee ha ha hoo hoo spooky sco spooky scary scary spooky boo ha 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 dash through her head back curling legs against her chest as four limbs wrapped around them psychotic laughter issuing forth from the speedster Pegasus as her world shattered around her. Psyche and spirit broken and splintered. Author's note. So I've only got a round and move this from G-Docs over to the proper site for it. Frankly, I'm surprised that it garnered such attention in the year since I wrote it. It was really only intended to be a sort of one-up of cupcakes and thusly a throwaway. But hey, people like it. Who am I to judge? What am I on? I am on oxygen. By the way, this was created by Emulation, so that was good. That one was good. Last one, a lot more gory. I think it's fitting. I think Rainbow's breakdown in this, though, makes sense, though, and it's fitting. But, uh... When somebody investigates what happened down there... Rainbow Dash is toast. She's just laughing down over there. So, with that out of the way... I like these stories. Absolutely loved them. Last one. I think cupcakes would have been so much better if we didn't talk about bodily functions. That there. That's I you know what? That might have been what made it really disturbing. I think that's the real like jerker, you know, if you really think about it, that might have been the kryptonite of it because you I can read. I can read the gore. I can hear about the dissecting and crud all day long. But I think it's the bodily fluid crud that I think. uh Makes you go, ugh, yuck, disturbing, ugh. Actually, you know, that's got to be true, though, now that I say it out loud. <laughs> Bodily functions, oh my, I'm not, I don't have to explain that. I know you all have brains, you can figure that out. <laughs> but, uh, wow. So, uh, I, I'm just gonna, like cut this like segment out when i finish uploading this i guess maybe because now we we have the uh, fun part of uh fixing the font <laughs> so that way we can watch the videos uh oh <laughs> We'll see if we'll see if we can fix this even. Actually, you know what? I don't think I can fix it because I am streaming. There you go. That's a new poll. <laughs> I spelt that wrong. Whoopsies.
<laughs> yeah, we'll try. I, I, I can't just turn it on and off. That's not something I can do. Just going to have to watch the long video edition, I guess. So I deeply apologize. The air was warm. The sun was shining. And every pony in Ponyville was having a glorious day. The town square was bustling and crowded. And busy ponies filled the streets. All the pony folk seemed to have somewhere specific to be. All except Rainbow Dash. Her place was in the sky. She tore freely through the air, speeding one way and then the next, buzzing the treetops and racing the winds. The blue pegasus swooped over a schoolyard, much to the delight of the children, then climbed several hundred feet into the air and dove, streaking downward as fast as she could. Seconds before hitting the ground, her wings flew open, and she pulled back up into the clear blue. Rainbow felt alive. Suddenly... Dash remembered she had somewhere to be. She was supposed to meet Pinkie Pie in five minutes. Dash had gotten so caught up in her exercises that she had nearly forgot that Pinkie had asked her to meet her at Sugar Cube Corner at three. Pinkie hadn't said why or what they'd be doing, but Dash knew that with Pinkie, it could be anything. Dash wasn't sure if she really wanted to go, though. Dash was so engaged with her stunts that she thought about blowing Pinkie off to continue flying, but... Dash's By the way, there's no picture yet, the so... She knew that it would hurt Pinky's feelings. After all, Pinky had said it was going to be something special just for the two of them. Dash considered it and thought, Why not? Heck, it might be more pranking. Pinky might have found a bunch more fun stuff to pull on folks, and they had so much fun the last time. Dash kicked it into overdrive to make up for the lost time, and sped to her appointment. When Dash walked into the store... She was immediately greeted by her host, who was bouncing in excitement. Yay! You're here! I've been waiting all day! Said That's the jumping Pinky. pony. Sorry if I'm a little late, Pinky. I was doing my afternoon exercises and lost track of time. Dash apologized. It happens. Pinky giggled and responded in a gleeful, assuring tone. Oh, that's okay. You're here now. What's a few more minutes? I've been so excited thinking about all the fun stuff we're going to do. I haven't stopped bouncing so Pinky is going, going to I murder I Dash. Dash gave a slightly uncomfortable laugh. She had always appreciated Pinky's friendly, outgoing way of life, but Pinky's overabundant enthusiasm almost creeped her out. Oh, Rainbow Dash, Dash watch out! Dash maintained a polite expression, however. If Pinky was this worked up, whatever she had planned must be good. So, you ready to get started, Rainbow Dash? I've got everything all ready! The yeah, we're not, said. we're not doing the Dash comic. Dash psyched herself up. You At least not today, so anyway. What we you gonna prank somebody? I got a couple of good ones I've been thinking about. Or maybe you've got some stunts you think I should try? Or perhaps... Making cupcakes! Pinky happily announced. Baking? Dash was disappointed. Pinky, you know I'm not good at baking. Remember last time? Oh, that's not a problem at all. I only need your help making them. I'll be doing most of the work. Pinky explained. Dash thought about it for a second. Well, alright, I guess that's okay. What exactly do you want me to do? Spirit, here you go. Pinky handed Dash a cupcake. Dash was puzzled. I thought I was helping you bake. Oh, you will be. I made this one just for you before you got here. So, is this like taste testing or something? Sorta. Pinky said. Dash shrugged and popped the pastry into her mouth. She chewed a bit and swallowed. Not bad. Uh -oh. Okay, now what? The fun begins. Dash asked. This is where your job ends and her. mine begins. Puzzled, Dash opened her mouth, but felt instantly lightheaded. A wave of dizziness washed over her. The world spun, and seconds later, she collapsed onto the floor. And they're out. Everybody just needs when to Dash relax. When Dash regained consciousness, she found herself in a dark room. She tried to shake her head, but found a taut leather strap held it firmly in place. She struggled more. But the braces around her chest and limbs glued her to the rack formed from a series of sturdy planks, which spread her legs wide apart. Dash's wings were the only part of her not tied down, and they fluttered frantically while she struggled to escape. As she writhed, 
Pinky jumped suddenly into her line of sight. Goody, you're awake! Now we can get started! Pinky stated gleefully. She bound into the darkness and quickly reappeared, pushing a small cart covered with a cloth. Pinky, what's going on? I can't move! Dash said urgently. Well, duh. That's because you're tied down, chided Pinky. That's why you can't move. I didn't think you need to be told that. But why? What's happening? I thought you said I was going to make cupcakes. You are helping. If you are I the cupcake. Have a special ingredient, and I need you to get more. Special ingredient? Dash was now breathing heavily and starting to panic. What special ingredient? Pinky giggled and responded. You silly. Dash's eyes widened, and her face contorted in fear. She started to laugh and said, in a voice bordering on hysteria, Ooh, you really got me there, Pinkie Pie. I mean, tricking me into thinking I'm going to get me into a cupcake? Yeah. I got to tell you, this that's is the a, best prank yet. That's a good prank. You win, you're the best. Pinky only giggled even more. <laughs> Aw, thanks, Dash. But I haven't done any pranks today, so I can't accept your praise. Dash was struggling uh -oh. again. Pinky, come on. This isn't funny. Oh, you but it's me. hilarious, Dash. Before Dash could answer, Pinky grabbed the cloth and whipped it off of the cart. On the cart was a tray containing various sharp medical tools and knives. We got flurry stew, we got rainbow dash cake. Sharp, as well as a, it's a large perfect world bag. we live in. Dash was in full panic mode. She was starting to hyperventilate. Her mind raced as she tried to reason with the pink pony. You can't do this, Pinky. I'm your friend. I know you are, and that's why I'm so happy that I've got you here. We get to share your last moments together, just you and me. Pinky skipped again. But the other ponies will wonder where I am. When the clouds pile up, they'll come looking for me, and then you'll get found out. Dash cried out in desperation. Oh, Dash. Pinky said. Don't worry. There are plenty of Pegasus ponies to take care of a few clouds. And besides, no pony will find out. I mean, how long do you think I've been doing this? And with that ominous statement, the light suddenly came to life and revealed the rest of the room. Oh, no. Dash reeled in horror at the images presented to her. The room was decorated with a typical but twisted Pinkie Pie flare. Colorful streamers of dried entrails fluttered around the ceiling. Brightly painted skulls of all sizes were attached to the walls, and organs done up in pastels filled with helium were tied to the back of chairs. The tables and chairs were made of bones and the preserved flesh of past ponies. Dash cringed upon seeing the centerpiece of the table nearest to her. The heads of four foals their eyes closed as if they were sleeping, were wearing party hats made of their own skin. With a thrill of terror, Dash recognized one of them as Apple Bloom's classmate, Twist. Dash's eyes darted back and forth and then fell upon the patchwork banner hanging from the rafters. Made from several Life tan is pony a party. Eyes, the words, Life is a party, were scrawled on it in blood red. Dash's attention was brought back by a party horn, unfurling and tickling her nose. She gaped at Pinkie Pie, who was standing right in front of her. The party pony was wearing a dress quilted from dried skin, emblazoned with cutie marks. On her back fluttered six Pegasus wings, all different colors. As the Earth Pony skipped in excitement, her necklace of severed unicorn horns clacked together loudly. Pinky asked. I love it, Pinky. It's Desperately, great. Dash pleaded with the smiling pony before her. Pinky, please. I'm sorry if I did anything to you. I didn't mean it. Please let me go. <laughs> I didn't mean I it. I won't tell anybody. Oh, silly oh, Dash. I didn't do anything. It's just that your number came up and, well, I don't make the rules. We can't turn back now. I don't make the Dash rules. Dash up. How could I this be happening? I don't make the rules. Aww, don't be sad, Dash. Said Pinky. Seemingly out of nowhere, Pinky produced a brightly painted blue and yellow skull. It was about pony sized, but it had a very defining feature a beak. Dash gaped in shock. Is. is that. is that. Hey, Dash, just hang together. Each pony's your name. Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. Pinky mimicked. I got it right before she left town. Remember when I left the party for about 20 minutes? enough time to play with her of course i had to wait until after the party to do that but boy am i glad i did dude pinky 20 minutes or less 
and she will have kidnapped Maybe. somebody completely. I have a number like everyone else in Ponyville, but when was I gonna get another chance to try Griffin? I probably should have asked where she came from so I could have gotten more, but I forgot. I'll tell you what though, she was quite the fighter. She lasted a long time, which was a lot of fun for me. I got the chance to play with somebody other than a pony and try new things. It's too bad she had such a meanie mouth. She said so much bad stuff, I just had to take your tongue out. You know, bad language makes for bad feelings, Rainbow Dash. Dash didn't have anything to say. She just sobbed and writhed in her tight bonds. Well, that's enough reminiscing, said Pinky, with an air of finality. It's time to begin! Putting down Gilda's skull, the pink pony gripped the scalpel in the cleft of her hoof and walked over to Dash's right flank. Without any flair, Pinky placed the blade an inch above Dash's cutie mark and began a circular cut around it. Dash cried out in pain and tried desperately to pull away, but the braces held it still. Finishing the incision, Pinky grabbed the curved skinning knife from the tray. Screwing up her face in concentration, she worked it under Dash's skin and sliced the It's okay, Rainbow. Feel the bird. Dash grounded her teeth as she tearfully watched her flesh peel off. Pinky then oh. moved to the other side oh, yes. and repeated the flayed, process on flayed Dash's flesh. left flank. When she had finished, Pinky held up both cutie marks in front of her and started waving them like pom-poms. Pom -poms. Dash just whimpered. I love her it. Her thighs burnt like nothing she had felt before. Placing the ragged patches of skin down, Pinky selected a large butcher knife and walked behind the blue pegasus. Ugh. Ooh, smooth. She grabbed Dash's left wing in her mouth and played with it for a few seconds. I don't know why, so but like, listening to this, I'm flanks. imagining Fluttershy then, doing this instead of Pinky wings, for whatever Pinky reason. Pinky brought the blade down hard at the base. Instantly, Dash screamed and thrashed her appendage. The movement threw off Pinky's aim. She tried to hit the mark again but missed and carved a huge slice into Dash's back. Pinky as her friend howled. Pinky took another whack and hit her target. She swung again and again. Blood Keeps happening, bro. God Pinky dang, Pinky, you madman. Anywhere, the blade just wasn't going through the bone. Mad girl. Mm, I guess I forgot to sharpen it. I'll try something else. <coughs> Yikes. Pinky matter of factly as she tossed the knife over her shoulder, embedding the blade in the table. Through a haze of pain and tears, Dash heard the sound of a metal box opening and closing. Pinky placed the tool over the mangled flesh of the last. Pinky tent. is just built Standing different. Standing on her hind legs, Pinky lives in a different reality. Back and forth with her front hooves, it sliced effortlessly through the bone and skin. Mm -hmm. The feeling of jagged teeth Feel grinding into her made Dash want to vomit. She watched numbly as her wing flew over her head and landed with a fluff on the table. Pinky moved to the next wing and started sawing. Dash didn't struggle this time. She'd given up trying to fight and focused on choking back screams of agony. Abruptly, the sawing paused. Pinky was only halfway done, the wing hanging off by a sliver. Dash! Pinky piped up. Ooh. Suddenly, Pinky yanked the Feeding wing as hard as to she Harry could. The bear? The Dang, snapped, that's a good idea. But the blue Pegasus skin held, then tore away. The pull ripped away a long strip of flesh all the way down Dash's back to Ugh. her rump. Her body sieged at the unexpected trauma. As her pelvis tensed up, Dash felt a warm release between her legs, and her loud, unending melody of pain filled the room. Unable to catch her breath, she blacked out. <gasps> Dash woke up with a gasp. Gasp is for sure! Holy cow! <laughs> as her vision swam into focus, she saw a very pretty Pinkie Pie, removing a large adrenaline needle from her chest. Stomping her hooves, the frustrated Pinky lashed out at her helpless Luckily victim. for Rainbow, there won't be a tomorrow. Dang. Dang. Dude, Pinky gaslighting Rainbow over here. 
as Pinky stepped Dude, to catch the her Dude, the fire Dash starting is soft, real. Softly. Her back was in agony. Her sides were on fire. And there was an intense pain Pinkie Pie in is legs. torturing. She again, she saw Pinkie Rainbow Dash, and she's throwing and shade. Noticing Dash's stare, Pinky quickly gulped the morsel down. What? Pinky asked. Oh, this? She held up another piece. Well, while you were asleep, I got a little impatient and helped myself to a small sample. I got it from your leg. You're not bad. Wanna try some? Pinky <laughs> shoved the strip of meat into the revolted Pegasus pony's mouth. Dash gagged and immediately spit the it pinky out. Pinky sleep experiment, Pinkie dude. frowned <laughs> and picked up the chunk of flesh. If you didn't want it, you could have said no. She contemplated <clears throat> the discarded snotty morsel, then gulped it up. Yuck! It's not like you hadn't had my cupcakes before. Gross. Swallowing, Pinky turned oh, her attention to a small can nasty. on the tray. Freaking nasty! I didn't realize that she in the reading. The lid, revealing that it was filled with she red hot ate coals, lying the on top of the coals up with several large nails. Food As from adrenaline freaking. filled her veins, she Dash began to panic. Oh, you get the idea. Picking up the can, Pinky walked over to Dash's left. Holding some tongs in her mouth, Pinky carefully picked up the nail and positioned it at the seam between her victim's front left leg and hoof. She then grabbed a hammer and took careful aim. No, Pinky! Dash screamed. The hammer came down and the nail punctured Dash's skin. The white hot burning was too much. Dash Ugh. screamed as she pulled and thrashed at the braces, causing her raw skin to rub and tear. Pinky tried to line up another nail but couldn't find her aim and let out a frustrated grunt. When Pinky brought the hammer back up to take a wild swing, Dash burst out crying and begging. Please stop! Please, please stop! Pinky Yikes. rolled her eyes. That's, that Putting sounds literally tongs, genuine. I she walked wow. back in front of her friend and stared pensively I'd believe at the that. broken Pegasus. Gilda didn't even cry this much Obviously, when she had a live pair of sprites good, shoved right? down her That's throat. That's the whole point. But that, like that, I'd believe. About what to do next. Then suddenly had a spark happening. of inspiration. I didn't know any better. Rotating a wheel on the rack, Pinky laid Dash on her back, then moved to Dash's hind legs, bringing the can with her. Picking up her tools, Pinky drove a searing hot spike of metal directly into there the bottom of Dash's hoof. As Dash yelled in pain, Pinky moved around and drove a second nail into the other hoof. Ugh. Next, Pinky went back to her cart and located an enormous battery and controller. Which she dragged over oh, to yeah, where they she are, was working. Sure. She tied copper wires between the terminals and the nails driven into Dash's hooves, then gave Dash a wink and flipped the switch. Electricity Feel the burn. Dash's body. The blue pony reacted oh, immediately. God. Her body seized <laughs> and her muscle snapped taut. Dash's hips thrusted skyward. Her eyes rolled back. Are they going to include she let out a deep throat shredding the blood cry. part? Pinky giggled and danced in place. Then reached down and turned up the juice. Dash convulsed uncontrollably. Are they gonna do the one part? Once more. No, they are. Oh, okay. They used the minutes, word bladder. Pinky shut off the power. Wisps of steam rose from the singed fur around Dash's hooves, and the area reeked of cooked flesh and burnt enamel. Pinky rotated Dash upright again and tried. <laughs> I'm the glad they the didn't do it from to word attention. to word. Dash? I really am. Dash! Dash moaned and managed to give a modicum of weak acknowledgement. Pinky studied her handiwork, then reached into the medicine bag and produced a large syringe. All right, time for the last round. Dash focused bleakly on the needle, which Pinky took as a question as to what it was. This is a little something to take the pain away. Pinky informed Dash as she walked around her victim's ruined back. Dash flinched as Pinky jabbed the needle into the lower part of the blue pony's spine. Moving in front of her friend again, Pinky leaned down and elaborated. In a few minutes, you won't be able to feel anything below your rib cage. Then you'll be able to stay awake to watch the harvest. Dash started to cry again. Pinky? She choked out. Yeah? <laughs> I want to go home. She sobbed. Yikes. Yeah, I can see you wanting to do that. Replied the party pony. Sometimes I just want to give up. Say, I'm done with this mess and go to bed. But, you know what? You can't shrug off your responsibilities. You gotta pull yourself up and meet the challenges head on. That's the only way you're gonna get ahead in life. Yeah, Dash it's, hung her head that's so scary of Pinky being like real. Effect. Eventually, Dash was completely numb from her chest to her flanks. At this point, 
Pinky approached with a scalpel. Glancing at Dash and smiling, Pinky made a long horizontal cut across the Pegasus pony's pelvis just above her crotch. Moving up Dash's body, Pinky made a similar incision under her ribs. Finally, Pinky made a long vertical cut down Dash's stomach, connecting the first two. Looks like I got my eye on you, Dash. <laughs> Pinky giggled. That's a With good laugh. With the most gooey sound, the flaps of skin opened. The sight of her own organs and the lack of feeling caused Dash's breath to intensify. Pinky carefully sliced open Dash's abdominal sac and grabbed her large intestines. Gross. As she separated the organs from the rest of the digestive tract and pulled it out of the new cavity, Pinky grew jovial. Laughing as she gutted her friend, Pinky began to make jokes. Dash, growing weak from this new source of blood loss, okay, desperately so, so, tried to shut out the So they aren't the act. mentioning the part about Pinky chewing Pinky down. Lying, slinging the intestinal tube around her neck. On her entrails like a, uh... so pretty. Reaching back inside, she sliced Fla the smaller uh, tooth floss. off of its bowels, squeezing out the excess excrement. Oh, Pinky never mind. Slimy there it is. Teeth there it is. It back never mind. I, I'm sorry I said anything. Oh, that's freaking foul. What was going on anymore. The shock was causing her Oh, to God. Disappointed, Pinky dived into the blue Pegasus gut. Ramping up her routine. Aww, don't go yet, Dash. Pinky started to pull out the rest of Dash's organs, pausing with each removal. I know it can be a real pain for you, but you know I'm just kidding with you. You really gotta learn to liver it up. Boy, these jokes are getting flattered. Guess I gotta develop a stomach for them. Pinky placed the discarded body parts in a bucket, keeping the last one for a bit longer. Ooh, bad pipes. She said placing the end of Dash's esophagus into her mouth and the stomach under her armpit. She squeezed, and a spurt of acid hit her tongue. Ew! Oh, hey, look, there's your cupcake, Dash! Dash didn't hear her torment her. She had slipped from consciousness minutes ago. Pinky, not yet satisfied, hit Dash with another adrenaline shot. Dash woke up for the last time, her heart pounding. Warm blood flowed out of the wound in her chest, with great spurts. It wouldn't be long now. Pinky brought Dash around onto her back again and straddled the blue pony's chest, scalpel at the ready. You know, Rainbow Dash, I'm disappointed. I thought you would have lasted longer. I really wanted to spend more time with you before we got here. But I guess it's my fault. I should take a little slower. Oh well. Really nice knowing you, Dash. <laughs> the blade sunk Just into like the that. Blue Just no, nice knowing you. <laughs> You're Dash's done. Chin. Coming back I just, down, I know, I had to jinx it. Then circled Dash's neck. I had to the jinx last it. Thing Rainbow Dash felt was her skin being cut away from her skull, and the metal blade scraping her teeth. Then she was gone. Pinkie Pie stared into the mirror. She had really done a good job, even keeping the eyelids. She winked, and Dash winked back. Pinkie smiled. But still, she was sad that her friend was now gone. Dash only lasted 50 minutes, not nearly as long as Pinky had wanted. She looked back at the cadaver hanging in the center of the room, the last of her friend's fluids draining into a pan. Yep, no more Rainbow Dash. As she looked, Pinky cocked her head. She began to take notice of the fact that there really wasn't much damage to the corpse. In the pink pony amused. I think... An idea exploded in her head. She was good at sewing, and she had all the pieces. All she had to do was put them back together. Yeah, she just had to go get some stuffing and bingo. She'd have Rainbow Dash forever. In fact, Pinky thought that's what she'd do for all of her best friends when their numbers came up. She was so excited. The numbers! She skipped right over to the body with her skinner to get started. The cupcakes could wait. Pinkie Pie had a friend to make. I love the added laughter for that. Beautiful. I had a, I had a thought. 
you know what well, hold on do i save it for after you know what i'm gonna keep you all in suspense <laughs> i'm gonna keep you all in suspense actually all right uh well, now we are going to watch rocket to insanity I think this was- Even Oh my gosh, hold on. Frickin' ads. <laughs> it's okay. Ads are fine. I get it. Oh my gosh, more ads! <gasps> oh. <laughs> Hey y'all, Legally Blonde is free on YouTube with ads, did you know that? I, I just found out. And you know, I noticed something about like the, uh, the screen resolution thing. I know that was bothering me for like the whole time, obviously, right? I made that very clear. But uh, we looked at a still image the whole time. <laughs> Nothing. We, we looked at the same image in complete darkness. And so, like, I was worrying about something that did not matter for this stream, literally at all. Morning. The following reading contains subject matter that some listeners might find. So this is Rocket to Insanity. Listener discretion is advised. Oh my god. Screams echoed throughout Sounds the Sounds so house real. Of Rainbow Dash's home. The filly startled wide awake in a cold sweat, terror surging through her veins. Nightmares, again, for the seventh time this month. And it was always the same one. The one with the cupcakes. Flashes of memory lanced through her head, wings being hacked off, then ripped from their sockets. Needles plunged into her beating heart. Adrenaline injected into her body to keep her wide awake and alert to the torture. The smell of her own flesh cooking, the sight of her own blood and gore spilling from her surgically incised belly. The mastermind behind her terror toying with those glistening organs like they were party favors. She knew in her heart that Pinkie Pie would never be capable of doing such a gruesome act. Oh, but, but that she thought is. didn't help make the dreams any less vivid. The Pegasus Pony sobbed openly, <laughs> curling up in her blanket and rocking back and forth as her body trembled with fear. She hadn't told any pony about the dreams or the lingering feeling of steel piercing flesh and blade cutting bone. Over time, her work suffered because of the constant night terrors. They were so powerful that she was simply afraid of going back to sleep. Ponies wondered why she spent most of her days napping in the open and in daylight. She could only I'm not gonna lie, the, like, the, shining the screen size the gives it a lot more of a cinematic look, if I'm being completely honest. Mind. So I actually kind of like it. The black clutches of her fear addled subconscious had begun to creep into that relative safety. Dash whimpered as tears streaked down her Poor face, Rainbow. staining the fur on her cheeks as wide eyes darted around the darkened scenery of her room, and her breath came before hiccuping sobs. Her wings clung tightly against her form as paranoia began to clutch the edges of her mind. Shadows lurched and moved in her peripheral vision, Routine natural noises becoming distorted and echoing within her mind as adrenaline surged through her shivering form. This wasn't healthy. Her mind was slowly breaking under the horrors of her own subconscious mind. Things that no pony should ever even have the slightest thought about, chipping away at her psyche. She was starting to crack. Ooh. Crack. Snap. Pop. 
Rainbow Dash? Rainbow Dash? Hey, is any pony seen Rainbow AJ. Dash around? Applejack trotted through the streets of Ponyville, looking high and low for the town's resident speedster AJ. pony. Bypassers just shook their heads and shrugged. Oh, horse feathers. Figures that pony's nowhere to be seen when you really need her. The cow pony grumbled and continued on through town, hoofbeats kicking up dust. As she looked Dang it, bro. Hi, Ryan. Nice to meet you. And control first. Over what's Consort it. <laughs> Rainbow Dash. Where are the Everybody Ryan meet Brian, whatever his name is. A long yawn from the branches of the tree behind her met her. <laughs> Brian answer. interrupted my the reading. In question, dipping a head oh, oh, it's down, not Brian, it's Ryan. I apologize. Upside down position. <laughs> what? Uh, Applejack? Ryan! So important that she had to go Frickin Ryan. Napping. The western pony stamped a hoof on the ground, scowling at the pegasus. Now you know just why I'm making a fuss and finding you. You said you were gonna bring a little rainstorm over the crops at Sweet Apple Acres Frickin two Ryan. hours ago. Ah. Instead, <laughs> I find you out here, in this tree, snoozing your little behind off. Dash gave a groan, Ryan slipping out scare. of the tree and landing on her hooves, shaking her head. She appeared more disheveled. The pain, and it's the world I currently find myself residing. <gasps> okay. Develed than usual, her mane a mess, dark bags under her eyes from many sleepless nights. She looked pale, sickly almost, yet still tried to put on an air of cheeriness. Yeah, yeah, keep your saddle on. Huh? I'll get it right now. Sorry and stuff. As the Pegasus pony turned and spread her wings to take off, Applejack tilted her head to the side and gave a small frown. Uh, Dash, are you feeling I'm okay? I'm just kidding. You look a little under the weather. Dash grumped, shrugging her shoulders as she gave her wings a little test flap. I'm fine, was the only response from the Pegasus. The cow pony behind her stepped forward, what? giving Dash's side a little nudge with her snout. You sure about that? Don't, don't touch me! I'm, I'm fine. Honest, I, I just. She nearly spilled the beans right then and there, but refrained. She couldn't take the chance that the other pony might think different of her because she was being so scared out of her mind every night by some stupid nightmare. Her body gave a little shiver as Applejack looked on with concern. I, uh, I mean, uh, gotta go! Before Applejack could say anything further, Dash was off like a rocket towards Sweet Apple Acres, leaving the cow pony to scratch her head in confusion. That girl just ain't right. <laughs> That girl just ain't right. <laughs> or Rainbow. Another terror-filled night. Dashlade curled upon the floor of her cloud home, blankets around her shivering form. It was worse this time. She'd been filleted open, set upon the dining table of the pink earth pony, as slabs of her own meat, dripping with her life fluids, were sheared from her flank, served to all of her friends, herself still somehow alive enough to be aware of the entire situation. Hearing the laughter as they devoured her life form, as fork and knife dug into her innards, tearing her apart. She was nothing more than a slab of meat for her friend's enjoyment. Hiccups punctured through heavy sobs as the Pegasus pony clutched at her head. The visions of her nightmares had begun she's to She's crying because she's having, like, non-stop nightmares. Detail. From the fiery pain of rent flesh to the sickening sound of innards being torn and ripped from her belly, she whined as she laid curled tightly upon the floor, sniffling as her tears gushed from her eyes. Just, just leave me alone. Why won't you just leave me alone? She hiccuped, rocking back and forth. I don't deserve this. Just, just stay out. Just get out of my head, please. Just, just stay out of my head. 
Poor the Rainbow. Fear turned to anger, Dash beating mm. her hooves <clears throat> against her temples. Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Fever dreams really do be like that. When you're sick and you keep having that same dream over and over again. And pounding at her head, bruising the flesh. It really be like that though. And sleep deprivation erupted in an agonizing scream of rage and sorrow. Another night, another crack in the window. Dang. Drama. Every pony had noticed. It was in the way she walked, the way she talked. Her body language said it all. Gone was Rainbow Dash, that cheerful, brash speedster. She was replaced by some hollow shell. She drifted aimlessly over Ponyville, as weeks of interrupted sleep had taken its toll upon her. All of her friends knew that something was up, but none of them knew exactly what to do. She had pushed them away, lashing out like a wounded animal every time they tried to console her and plead for her to get help. Too headstrong, some would say. Too proud, others still. But none of them realized the gravity of the situation until that one fateful day. The day that Rainbow Dash finally snapped. It had been an unseasonable warm spring day in Ponyville, as every pony went about their business, Lyra and Bonbon bon chatting it up beneath their usual table at the cafe, Applejack selling the first harvest from Sweet Apple Acres, as ponies lined up for those ruby delectables. And within Sugar Cube Corner, Pinkie Pie was busy darting to and fro in the kitchen, baking up a storm. She glanced at the clock every now and then, frowning each time, before the bell to the door finally rang, a haggard-looking Rainbow Dash entering the shop. Rainbow! You're finally here! Oh, I've been so worried about you! You've been all mopsy-dopsy, so I thought I'd ask you to come visit me so I could make you feel extra super special! Oops, that was loud. My up. bad. But then you didn't show up when I thought you were going to, and I was all sad that you were going to stay cooped up in your house all day, but then you came, and now you're here, and now we can have some fun! Dash merely looked at her blankly, before shaking her head and stumbling forward. Whatever, Pinky. What do you want me here for? The energetic Earth Pony bounced about the kitchen, over towards one of the many ovens of Sugar Cube Corner, before pulling the door down, reaching in and pulling out a tray of puffy, fluffy cupcakes. She spun around, grinning widely as she showed the baked goods to Dash. I need you Dash paled. Her mind flashed back to the earliest of those nightmares. The most vivid, the most intense. A tray of cupcakes, tasting it. Finding motor skills rapidly deteriorating. Stumbling as her body shut down under the effects of some unknown drug. Pinkie Pie looming over uh -oh. her with that trademark grin. Uh -oh. Eyes gleaming as the world dimmed around her. Now... You take a nap. Dash's vision became hazed as the world began to spin around her. She stumbled back, shaking her head and whispering under her breath. No, 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 no! She backed up, eyes wide with fear as she shook her head violently, looking around frantically for an easy way out, or any way out. The window, the door. No, no! Pinky merely tilted her head to the side quizzically. She set the tray down and lifted a few cakes out and plated them. She bounced over to the shivering Rainbow Dash and offered the plate to the Pegasus. Dash stared at them. They were the same color, the same kind. Run! A voice in her head said, Run, you idiot! Run! A hoof flashed out, smacking the plate out of Pinky's hooves. I said I don't want them! I know what you're trying to do! It's not going to work! Pinkie Pie frowned at the discarded cupcakes. But in typical Pinkie Pie fashion, she just shrugged and went about cleaning them up. Maybe you don't like avocado icing? <laughs> That's okay. I made plenty more so we can make some to your liking. Is that okay, Dashie? 
she glanced back, the Pegasus letting out panicked, whimpering noises. Eyes fixated on the pony before her, her eyes nearly pinpricked. Oh, she's having an episode. It's time. Through her veins, she was pinned between Pinky and the wall behind her, chest heaving with heavy gasps. Horror filled her mind, playing the scenes from her nightmares over and over again of the saw rending off flesh, cutting through bone. Say, Dash, why do they call it a hacksaw? It doesn't hack. Hacking is what I was doing with the knife. This is a saw. I don't get it. Run! G -g get away! The scalpel piercing her breast, dragging through her flesh down her groin, flaying her open like some sick sort of pinata. In a few minutes, you won't be able to feel anything below your rib cage. <laughs> then you'll be able to stay awake and watch the harvest. Move! The harvest. Get away! The harvest is such an ominously foreboding name. By now, no longer seeing the longtime friend, but a horrific, the harvest. Aww, I thought you would have lasted longer. Oh well, it was really nice knowing you, Dash. Do something! And then she saw it, that shining sharp protector just sitting there on the table next to her. A voice within her mind whispered to her. Like a seductive lover, sounding so wrong, but so right at the same time. Kill her. Dash hesitated. Part of her wanted to scream, another to run, but yet another considering the actual request. Kill her before she kills you. Her mind was a maelstrom of conflicting thoughts. The Pegasus felt sick to her stomach, the beat of her own heart pounding within her head. Take the knife. She stared at it, hoof slowly stretching out, trembling as parts of her still ward, still tried to reason. Take it. Take the knife. Tears streamed down her face, but her hoof hovered over the handle of the tool turned weapon, as if the last frayed strands of her sanity knew what was happening knew that it was a fighting battle it was going to lose. Take it! She snatched it, holding it in front of her at Pinkie Pie with shaky hooves. Her ears splayed back against her head. Just leave me alone! Please, Pinkie Pie! Just... Just leave me alone! Pinkie Pie looked Dang, at the knife dude. I can believe it if I heard moment. that. For giggling and bouncing over towards Dash, That's nuts. whose heart sank as the filly rapidly approached. <laughs> oh, Dashy, you silly filly. You got me good with that one. Never one to turn down an opportunity to prank, huh? <gasps> she didn't think. Her My God, out of nowhere. Gasp. Pinkie Pie looking thunderstruck as Dash heaved, frozen in mid strike. Pinkie Pie brought a hoof up to her cheek, dabbing at a wide cut, looking at her own blood-stained hoof. Dash? I... I told you! I told you to stay away! Why couldn't you just stay away? Kill her. No! She's my friend! I... I can't! Dude, she's I talking to herself her. like a nutcase. And the hurting will stop. Kill her, 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 as Pinky tried to make sense that of what sounded was happening, so Dash good. Let out that a was cool. Mix between a wail and a scream, catching the earth pony off guard as the blade darted forward, slashing through her neck, severing vein and artery as the gout of crimson issued forth from the wound. Shock and surprise registered on Pinkie Pie's face as she gurgled, blood hemorrhaging from that wound, staining her pink fur with the red hue of her life essence. Again and again that blade struck out, 
Dash's speed not restricted to her flight as she plunged the blade into the filly with increasingly rapid pace. Sobbing hysterically as she carved the squirming and flaying filly up through breast, through bone, Pinkie Pie's struggles slowly faded as her blood was spilled onto the floor of Sugar Cube Corner's kitchen, pooling around her, splattering the Pegasus atop her with the hot red fluid. Just leave me alone! She screamed, fear turning into rage. You couldn't just go away, could you? You just had to keep coming back! Dang. His eyes were wide with terror. That's nuts. Tears streamed down her face. Visage frozen in a mix of fear and anguish. As those slowly glazing eyes stared up at Dash, the strikes of the blade grew slower until the Pegasus finally plunged the implement deep into Pinky's chest. <coughs> spearing through the filly's heart and ending her party once and for all. Dash heaved for breath, limbs shaking as she looked down at her handiwork. Blood stained her fur and feathers, painting her a deep crimson, wearing the life force of her former friend like some sick outfit. She sobbed, letting out a wail of anguish as she realized the gravity of what she had just done. Her hooves wrapped around the butchered filly, holding tightly at the still warm corpse of her friend. Dude. What did I do? Dash's body shook as her chest heaved with each gut-wrenching cry of anger. She gaslighted herself into murder. And let out an ear-piercing shriek of terror as she looked down at her own hooves. Blood and viscera coated them, dripping down through the fur. The scene straight out of a horror movie laid before her eyes. She skittered backwards slipping in the pool of blood of her own creation, slamming cheek first into the pile of gore before finally gaining purchase and dragging herself over to the farthest wall from Pinky's still form, her stomach retching in her as she emptied its contents upon the floor next to her. Her mind raced, thoughts running a mile a minute. Wide, terror-filled eyes stared at the scene made by her own huff. Murder. She had just committed murder. She had mercilessly Ooh. slaughtered one of her dearest friends. It was unheard of. No pony had murdered another in hundreds of years. And they'll believe they you when you say you did do it. And whispered to Think her. positive. She's dead. She's dead. What have you done? What have you done? You did this. You're a monster. Never forgive yourself. You did this. You're a monster. You're a monster. The world spinning around her as time seemed to stand still for her, the last vestiges of her sanity being plucked apart one by one until the final thread snapped. Hooves grasped at her head, matting her rainbow colored mane down with blood. The Pegasus rocking back and forth in the bloodied kitchen as a crazed grin spread across her muzzle, humming disjointedly to herself. Giggle at the ghastly! Startle at the spooky! Dash. She's having a lot of fun. Curling legs against her chest as four limbs wrapped It's. Oh, dear God. Psychotic laughter issuing forth from the speedster Pegasus. It created as a her monster. World shattered around her. Psyche in spirit, broken and splintered. She's having way too much fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. Dang, dude. That's nuts. Cloud drawing, cloud drawing is a deviant art. Good job. Good job, Meg. Boom, boom. 
All right. So obviously you all want to watch some psychedelic Sinclair du Gore. So we'll go ahead and watch that. I actually, I don't think I've actually seen this one, believe it or not. <laughs> we aren't watching Godzilla. All right, uh, Rocket to Insanity by Sinclair du Gore. Okay. Groovy. Oh my god, what? I can't understand a word, but I think that's part of the fun. We got little hearts for nostrils. Day after day, night after night. Going for some sleep. That is psychedelic for sure, oh my goodness. No, we aren't doing that. We're staying on task. Well, this is not- this isn't what I thought was gonna happen. That's a good animation for sure. Oh my god. <laughs> my eyes! Fake. Real fake. Okay, so Rainbow Dash is struggling to tell the difference between reality and not. There's her sanity cracking. Knock knock, your next love pinky. I wanna cut you up and see you go run. I wanna be a one hour and have some fun. There's the cupcake. Oh the eyeball. She's freaking out. It's time to finish this. Oh my gosh, dude, Dash is unhinged. Dang, bro! Oh my god! <laughs> wow! Look at that! Dude, Rainbow lost it! Oh my- I can't even find my mouse anymore! Here it is! You can see it for a few minutes. Holy cow, my eyeballs! Oh! <laughs> I like that though. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. Material girl! Material girl! Oh. Oh god. I clicked on Pegasus device by accident. Uh oh. I have to play it now. I have to play it now. I have to pay for my <laughs> actions.
This song slaps. She's a history like a shadow hiding in a mystery. A late night story very far away. Tell her once again, she's the light of day. I wish more songs like this, like, came back. This just slaps. What a quote. What a quote right there. Freaking gosh, dude, it's so good. We aren't reading the Rainbow Factory tonight. The only reason this I'm playing this one is by accidentally clicking it. Yeah, I figured that out after a second. Mm hmm. Fine, I'll play the Rainbow Factory. Ah, uh, you know Pegasus device. I love the ending of this one. The way it tails into the next one. Single soul gets through. This part. No! I can't roll O's that long, but you know, you get the idea. <laughs> All right, I'll play. I'll play the the uh, original Rainbow Factory. Okay. Yeah, actually, we're not gonna play. We're not gonna play. We're not gonna play the original. 
because I, I know everybody and their mother has seen the original. So uh, we're going to watch another animation. I like this one. I like this one. The original does have a special kick to it. I like that this one is just made by so many people, though. The violin, though? The violin, though? Oh, God, I see the violin. It just teases you. You know what's going to happen. I actually really like this part. Uh, I reacted to all of these, by the way. I have a video uh, in the... in the unsorted section. Playlist on the channel, so you can watch, like, the original reaction to those. Ugh. I, do, we, do we have to do we listen to Awoken now? I think we gotta listen to Awoken now. We listen to all but one. good though the rhythm is just all there the beat and everything ah all these creators that made this very awesome i love that i love that scene okay gotta end it right there that way it doesn't auto play into whatever's next who knows what's next i don't know what's next okay here we'll watch We'll watch the original, the OG. Do, do, do. Cloudsdale Weather Corp, all systems nominal. You get the machines turning on. My life on judgment and constant pain.
She's taking back control. Yeah, let's go. Love it. Try my best to block out the screams. That harmony in my dreams. I freaking love the music. on. It's honestly like really hard to not want to sing along to this song. It slaps. It really does. Why'd you turn it off, huh? Get back to work. That's what I thought. Make me question my reality. Dude, this was the fandom at its peak. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. I'm taking back control. Love this scene. In my dreams, please break my shackles. I wanted to stop. So good, though. It's so good. The music is so good. It all just works. I'm just in awe about this. I can only imagine how hard this would have been to make. We got a runner! Blaze did a good job with this. I'm becoming a part of you. Somebody would stop the machine for an employee, right? Somebody would. Somebody would stop it, right? <laughs> Gosh, dude, if I had any skill whatsoever that being able to create stuff like this that would be awesome. I'm this is something I however don't have a particularly strong interest in pursuing so that pro I probably won't ever do that, but it's a it's a kind of I wish type thing. All right, so curious question Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. <sighs> Do you all remember? Do you all remember Ed Plus? Warning, the following video contains mature elements not suitable for younger viewers and may affect your views or appreciation for certain My Little Pony characters. Viewer discretion is advised. I watched this as a kid. It's an SFM. Absolutely nuts.
I feel like a lot of people forgot about Ed Plus, but not me. Oh, I remember the series. I remember Sweetie Belle was like the character. Exercises and I lost track of time. <laughs> oh, that's okay. You're here now. What's a few more minutes? I've been so excited thinking about all the fun stuff we're gonna do. I haven't slept down since I woke up. I mean, I almost forgot to breathe. I've been so happy. <laughs> so, you ready to get started, Rainbow Dash? I've got everything all ready. You betcha, Pinky. So, what do you got planned? Are we gonna prank somebody? I got a couple good ones. Oh, nice. Rainbow's got Maybe a Plan. I think I should try. Or perhaps. Making cupcakes. Baking. Pinky, you know I'm not good at baking. Remember the last time? Oh, that's not a problem at all. I don't need your help making them. I'll be doing most of the work. Well, all right, I guess that's okay. What exactly do you need me to do? That's the spirit. Here you go. You still make stuff. I thought I was helping you bake. You got here. So, is this like a taste testing or something? Sorta. Taste test plus. Taste test with extra steps. No. No, no, no. Okay, now what? Now, you take a nap. Uh, Smooth, pinky. Oof. Oh, it's a rat. See, these are so good. Just a prank yeah. dash. That's because you're tied down. That's why you can't move. I didn't think you need to be told that. But why? What's happening? I thought you said I was gonna help you make cupcakes. You are helping. You see, I ran out the special ingredient and I need you to get more. Special ingredient? What special ingredient? <laughs> you silly. <laughs> oh, you really got me there, Pinkie Pie. I mean, tricking me into thinking I'm going to be made into a cupcake? I gotta tell you, this is the best prank yet. <laughs> you just you're a the prank, best. Dash. Get over it. <laughs> Aw, thanks, Dash. But I haven't done any pranks today, so I can't accept your praise. Pinkie, come on, this isn't funny. Then why were you laughing? That gives off some exorcist Pinky, vibes. Pinky, I'm your friend. I know you are. And that's why I'm so happy that I brought you here. We get to share your last moments together, just you and me. But the other ponies will wonder where I am. When the clouds pile up, they'll come looking for me. And then you'll get found out. Oh, Dash. Don't worry. There are plenty of Pegasus ponies to take care of a few clouds. And besides, no pony will find out. I mean, how long do you think I've been doing this? Oh, this is it. This is the last thing of the night. We are not doing anything else after this. We're done. Hey, hey, hey. Life is a party. Pinky, please 
Please, I'm sorry if I did anything to you. I didn't mean it. Dude, Please these animations were so good for the time. Oh, Dash, you didn't do anything. I'd say they I still have like a creepy, happen. like old well, nostalgic well, factor to them. It's Gilda! Hey, Dash, let's hang together. Hey, Dash, it's me, it's Gilda! I got her right before she left town. Remember when I left the party for about 20 minutes? That wasn't enough time to play with her, of course. I had to wait till after the party to do that. Yeah, but it's boring, am I glad I'm Oh my god, Pinky, you maniac. I know, there's something about, like, when you watch stuff as a kid that everything was, like, felt intense. Like, the weight of the world just didn't affect you. You looked at this and it was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, on loop in your brain. This is where the fun begins. Scream! Music is hitting hard, though, for real. Dash, scream more! Oh, peel it! Oh! Scream! Oh my god, that's so screwed up. Look at my cutie marks! Wing it. I know, child me is like, yeah, it's murder! Pinkie Pie is Butcher Pete confirmed. <laughs> Yoink. Honestly, this whole video just depicts the whole thing like as a perfect a cinematic animation almost. Like the whole thing was an animation from the beginning. It really feels like it, and I love it. Boom, 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 Think fast! <laughs> Think fast! <sighs> I, source filmmaker, I believe, but, you know, source filmmaker includes a lot of other crud, usually. So, who knows? Delicious. Gulp. Do you want some? Oh, this? Well, while you were asleep, I got an vacation and helped myself to a small sample. I got from your life. You're not bad. You want to try some? Oh. 
Oh, yummy. Oh, oh God. The coppery flavor. Oh. It's not like you haven't had, like, cupcakes before. Uh-oh. This is where the fun begins. Dude, music is a tutor and like intense. Things are getting ready. No, this, no, no. It's that's it for you, Dash. No, for real. <laughs> Got some disco rave music going on here. This is gonna be shocking. Oh, the wink! That's what it's probably probably sounded like. It's a little quiet. I wanna go home. I make the same mistake too though. Yeah, so. I think you want to do that. Sometimes I just want to give up. Be kind of one and go to bed. But you know what? You can't shrug off your responsibilities. You gotta pull yourself up and meet the challenges head on. That's the only way you're gonna get ahead in life. Pinky with the realism though. That was weird. Oh, nasty. That's so disgusting. so crazy that Pinky's literally scooping every single one of them out. That is so nuts. Ooh, 
bagpipes. There's your cupcake. Oh, right into the lung. Oh my god. Look at that. Honestly, it's probably a good thing Rainbow Dash is tapping out. I don't know how you could live after being that viciously mauled and mangled and tortured. Beautiful. That's nuts. The credits are so extra. Twenty thirteen. Holy cow, I that was a wild session. That was a wild stream. I'll see about maybe cutting the uh some of the parts out of it. But my goodness golly, holy cow, that was that was an adventure. Chat was having a stroke most of the session, so that was something. And, uh, wow. Wow. I like that, though. That That's some good classic nostalgia right there. That's nuts. I don't really have anything to say. I really don't. We did get sidetracked with Rainbow Factory, so uh, that's I kind of I kind of apologize for that one. It was a trip and then some, but uh, yeah, honestly, honestly, I'm pretty speechless. I don't know how to continue from here, so we'll probably just end it. Ah, oh, I like that though. All classic nostalgia. All of it. All of it classic nostalgia. So I still can't get over the frickin' releasing of the bowels part. That crud was just whack. Pinky using the intestines as like a tooth floss. Absolutely unhinged. Standard of quality, that's why. But, uh, yeah. As always, folks, hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you all in the next one. Actually, I might stream something after this, because I'm not tired. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all very soon.